Welcome, everybody. I know it's been a week off. Last week, you know, being a school teacher, we had marching competition, and I just wiped out my Saturday recording time. So, apologize for a week off. Um, today, we're going to finish up with the endorsement topic. Uh, if you remember, in my last video, I said that I was going to do a endorsements the bad. And, and it's not really... We're going to chat through this. We're going to give my what happened to me and why I decided to part ways with two companies after 21 years. This is just my view. This is my take what happened to me. Uh, one thing you need to know is that these two companies, they're, they make great products. Even when I left, they were making great products. Uh, this, this came down to a situation in time and, and basically getting lost in a shuffle. So let's go back a bit, shall we? So way, way back, right now I'd be about 26 years, 25 years, something like that. I got uh, an endorsement with a stick company. Now, I'll be honest right up front, I'm not going to name names of companies. I'm not going to name names of people. This and the reason is because they they still make great products. The people there are good people. It was a situation. It was a situation in time. So keep that in mind. That's why I'm not throwing anybody under the bus. Those of you who know me and know my situation know who the two companies are. And if you're clever enough to work through what I'm about to say, you'll probably be, probably be able to figure it out. But again. This is, I'm not throwing shade on the product. I'm not sh throwing shade on the people. This was, this was just a bad, bad timing thing. So way back, I got this endorsement with the stick company and it was great. Uh, they treated me well. They got me product whenever I needed it. I could call somebody and they would answer the phone and it wasn't just ordering something. It was having a chat about about life in general and just you know how are things going and and it was really cool and then I landed with this drumhead company and it was the same type of thing you could call you could get what you want and they would chat with you and it was it was just a cool experience always being able to get what you want and and have their backup so we want to fast forward many years about 19 <laughs> And actually, it wasn't even 19. It was probably more like 16, 15 or 16. And these two companies get purchased by a much larger company. And you can already feel where this is going. So this larger company comes in, they purchase it. You, you always get the, oh, we're going to take care of you type of stuff. And, and we'll stay out of the way, blah, 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 blah. So at the beginning, that's what happened. They stayed out of the way. They, they came in. They, they actually made quite a few things better, to be honest. And I really liked it. Uh, one thing that was great and, and ended up being negative, and I didn't see it right away, was they created a website where endorsers could go and get their products filled. Just get on the website, you know, type in what you need, where it's going, and they'd send it out, both sticks and heads. And that was great. It was real convenient. The problem here was this was the start of, of separation between the, the artist and the, your artist relations person. Now, could you still email that person? Could you still call them? Yeah, you could. But when you're just ordering up something, it, it's just easy to get online and go click, 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 click. It's on its way, and then you're off to do whatever you need to do. Um, so there started to become a separation there. So it was cool and bad at the same time. Fast forward a few more years to probably year 19 out of this deal with me. And being a high school percussion instructor, we use all kinds of mallets and sticks. Not just sticks, but all kinds of mallets. Mallets for orchestral bells, mallets for marimba, mallets for vibes, chimes, timpani, you name it. You know, that's what we use. And I started to see where 
I would try to get online and I wanted to replace something and it was gone. And it felt like little by little, those percussion products were disappearing. The sticks seemed to be there, but the percussion products started disappearing, like xylophone mallets and, and vibe mallets and timpani mallets and things like that. So in my world, that's not good. And I was trying to get an answer about why this is happening. And I, and I started getting this comment back. And, and I wasn't able to get in touch with people, which was, which was starting to get weird. And I was getting these comments back like, oh, we've got greater things coming. You just wait. It's coming. It's coming. And, the, and I'm like, well, okay. I can deal with that. When's it going to show up? Oh, it's going to be in the next few months. A few months come by. Nothing was being replaced. Nothing was coming out. But we kept hearing about these great products that were about to hit in percussion world. So about a year goes by. And uh, we get this, I go to this thing called the Percussive Arts Society International Convention every year. And we got this thing from the company saying that they were going to have this brand new exhibit in the exhibit hall. Now typically, with all the sticks and companies, they, they, they pretty much bring darn near everything that they make. Not just the new stuff, but they bring pretty much darn near everything they make. And they were touting how they're going to have this really super cool exhibit. And I was actually pretty stoked to go check this out. So I go to this convention, one, to check out that exhibit. Well, it's not why I went to the convention, but going to the convention, I'm going to go check out this exhibit. And uh, the, the other thing was to find my rep, who I haven't been able to get in touch with. Sporadic emails at best. And I go to the convention, and then I hunt down the booth. And it was kind of a cool idea, not going to lie, their, their, little, their little booth was. But the problem here was, I couldn't, uh, my rep wasn't there. I knew, I knew he was in the area. He was dealing with the other professional clinicians that were going to be there that they sponsor. I get that. I understand. That's where he's got to be. But at some point, you'd think we would find them at the, at the exhibit. And... Not only that, I'm at the exhibit, and pretty much all they showed were the new products, which did not include many mallets at all. So I saw drum heads, uh, cool ideas for drum heads. Uh, the sticks were great. The products they had there were top notch. That was never the issue. <laughs> it's never been the issue, and I'll say that till I die. The product. Quality was never the issue. It was the lack of product I needed that became the issue. So at that convention, in talking to some people who were who you could say are slightly in the know, they were saying that the big company wasn't seeing the sales of these percussion items that they wanted to. So if they're not selling at a certain level, they let them go. Now that's third party. I never found out if that was the case. It would make sense if you, if you see any big company takeover, things like that happen. So I don't know if that actually was the case or not, but I was getting that through, through side channels. And I never did find my rep, who I had never met in person at this point, because it had changed. It had, it had gone to like a third person by now over 19 years. And so I didn't even know who this person was. I knew the name. Um, and in talking to the people that were manning the booth, it was like they had more interest in hanging out with their buddies from college that happened to be showing up than talking to an artist. And I get it. I'm not, you know, I'm an educational artist. That's what I do. That's why I have the endorsement. So I'm not, you know, some super big wig on the cover of Modern Drummer magazine. I understand my level, but you would think they'd want to talk to you at some point. So after four days here, I never would got in touch with my rep, my artist relations person. And that kind of put a sour taste in my mouth. But I'm like, ah, okay, we'll just we'll just keep trying to email, we'll do whatever. 
Um, and this was even, hey, here's my cell number. Have him call me, and then we can meet up somewhere while we're all in Indianapolis at the same time. Nothing. Zero. So we go into the next year, and that promise of percussion product kept coming, but there was never any, any product. It never showed up. You kept hearing about it, never showing up. So let's fast forward an entire year back to the next convention, the same convention, just the next year. So I go, and, and I had even emailed saying, hey, I need to hook up with you at the convention. Let's, you know, I got some questions I need answered. And so I go to the convention, and they have the same booth, and it was the same thing. Just the brand new stuff that didn't involve mallets or percussion items involve some new sticks or some new signature sticks and some new drum heads. And I walked in and my rep wasn't there again. They were off doing their thing. And again, I understand that. But I go up to this person who was manning the booth, who had on his badge, vice president of some part of this company. And I said, well, you know, hey, I need to see so-and-so. And they were like, oh, well, they're with, we're, they're with an artist at a clinic and they'll be back in such and such a time. And I said, hey, maybe you can help me. And I kind of gave my, my, queer, my question. <laughs> and he was like, oh, I, I couldn't tell you about that. You'll have to wait till so-and-so comes back. And, uh, you know, they'll be back at some point. And then the dude just walked away <laughs> from one of his supposed endorsees, endorsers, excuse me. And I was like, wait a minute, I wasn't done. And he just walks away and he walks over to some dude he knew and they started like doing the high five thing and, you know, having the chat. And that really set me off. That inside, I was just like, you have got to be kidding me, right? So uh, that was a Thursday. I figure, all right, I'll go do some clinics. I'll come back. I come back later in the day, still no artist relations person. Thursday night comes, go to the concert. I go back to my hotel, and Friday shows up. And let's try again. <laughs> and so my other, my other company, Mapex, uh, Majestic Mapex, man, they're like the coolest people ever. And you show up in their booth, and it's always like, you know, it, it's, it's just a cool moment. They'll spend all this time with you. They'll show you the new product. They'll do all this. The dude, at, the, the vice president of whatever, didn't even offer to show me the new product they had in the booth. And I'm an endorser. And I'm like, okay, that's odd. So this is Friday. And again, going throughout the day and I'm doing clinics. I'm coming back to the booth and I'm doing clinics. I'm coming back to the booth and nothing, nothing. It was, it was so weird. Uh, and then that night, Friday night, I was, I was at my hotel room and I made the decision and I'm, I'm a very loyal person when it comes to this. And I made the decision that I'm going to go and talk to, um, innovative percussion, Vic Firth and Remo. I'm going to talk to those three companies. Two of them are, are stick mallet companies. The other ones, drum heads. I'm going to go talk to them. And I have a connection at, at Remo, a very close connection, was my professor, Johnny Lee Lane. He was working for Remo at the time, and he was in the booth. Um, and, and, and he knows me quite well, and I know him quite well. And we always chat, you know, we're always chatting when we're there. Good hang. And um, I walked in on Saturday morning, walked in, I did a clinic or two, and then I walked to the convention center, and I went straight to Innovative Percussion. These people don't know me, and I don't know them. And they had every product they make displayed in this exhibit hall. All of it. And they make great product. So did this other company that I was with. But they had everything there. And, and the gentleman that was there, again, he didn't know me from, from Adam. And he took the time. He took over an hour to show me stuff in their booth. Show me their, their mallets, their marimba mallets, their timpani mallets, uh, just strange mallets for strange sounds, sticks. Uh, they, were, they were coming out with a stick line now. 
and and you could just tell, you know, high quality product. And this person who didn't know me was spending time with me literally over an hour in the booth explaining their booth and such. And then I made the comment, you know, hey, I, you know, I might be thinking on changing companies. Didn't say who I was with. And he was just like, and, and he didn't push, he didn't pressure me. He didn't push it. He was just like, hey, you know, we'd love to talk to you about it. And here's the person that you'll want to contact. Uh, hit up this person in an email. And that person was there. And he introduced me to that person. And <laughs> We had a conversation and they were like, yeah, let's chat about it. Let's see, let's see if we're the right fit for you and you're the right fit for us. And I thought that was super cool and they were just cool people. Then I made the jaunt over to Remo Drumheads to see my old professor, Johnny Lee Lane. And I told him what I was going to do. And I had forgotten Johnny was a Vic Firth artist. And I told him what, my, what was going on and what I was trying to do. And... Uh, he takes me straight over, <clears throat> straight over to the Vic Firth booth, and he introduces me to, to Chuck at, at Vic Firth. And Chuck spent uh, probably about an hour and a half with me. And literally, I'm like, I don't know, 25 yards away from, from, the, from, my, boot, from my endorser booth that, that I'm with the company. And it was like, I don't know, it felt a little weird, but... I was mad. Anyway, Chuck Chuck spent a ton of time with me, and I walked out of there going, man, those are two stick and mallet companies that actually feel like they care about you. Again, it wasn't about the quality of the product. It was about they made you feel like, like they had an interest in you. They made you feel like because they had an interest in you that you should have an interest in them. And, you know, it just... It, <sighs> Either one of those companies felt right to me. Then uh, Prof Lane started hooking me up with the Remo company. So I left that convention and having made the decision that I was going to move on. Uh, there, a matter of fact, it never came back that, that I was making the wrong decision. And um, obviously in the last endorsement, you saw, you know, I've, I've been with... Uh, uh, Apex and Majestic for several years now, and they have been <laughs> some of the coolest people ever. Uh, I hooked up with Vic Firth, and they have been wonderful. Call them, they'll talk to you forever, and, and they'll get you the product. They have all this product and this fantastic product at that. They've been fantastic to me. Uh, hooked up with Remo. That one took a little doing, but, but we got it done. And they too have been outstanding with me with, with the deal that I get with their drum heads. Um, they're the biggest drum head manufacturer in the world. At least I believe that's still the case. Uh, in any case, so I'm hooked up with them. And they have been, all those companies have been fantastic with me. So my point being in this video is that it wasn't about quality of product. I keep saying that because it wasn't. It was about being treated right, especially when you had been with a company for, for decades, okay, two decades, and they couldn't talk to you, and your guy couldn't answer, you know, um, it was quite telling when I came home, I, I finished up getting my endorsements with Vic Firth and Remo and whatnot, and I had made that decision, and I had emailed my artist relations person and said that I was going to jump ship, basically, and here's why. And it was so telling that it was less than 20 minutes, and my phone rang from that person, the person I've been trying to get in touch with forever, like for two years. And they're like, oh, what can we do? You know, oh, I'm sorry about that. And oh, yeah, that, that's on me type of stuff. And it's just like, you know, whether it's on you or not, it shouldn't be on you. You should be taking care of business. And, and again, I'm not, I'm not the biggest artist in the world, but I do sell a lot of sticks and mallets a year. Uh, like I said in my last video, I sell piles of Vic for sticks and mallets per year. You know, I'm sure other people sell more, but I do sell a lot for them. And same thing with drum heads. I sell a lot of, of drum heads just by being an influence. You know, I'm not somebody that sells them. I influence people to purchase them. That's why I get to endorse. So 
in the end, it's not about product. It, it's, it's actually, you know, it's somewhat about the person. And I know that that person isn't a bad person. I, they just didn't take care of business the way I thought they should have. And when you get lost in the shuffle, you have to look out for you. Um, it, it's, it's what's right for you. That was not right for me and I had to move on. So I'm very happy with where I am. Mapex, Majestic, Vic Firth, Remo, they've all been fantastic to me. Maybe someday I can get, you know, a Zildjian endorsement. Um, so in any case, that was my, my story about the bad of the endorsement world, why I had to jump ship. Uh, it, it felt weird because, I, like I said, I'm a loyal person when it comes to these things. And it felt weird, but in the end, it became right for me. Uh, yeah, I, I haven't had to worry about those situations anymore. Whenever I need something, I, yeah, sure, I email, but I can also call that person right to their office. If And literally, with all these companies, if they're not there and I have to leave a message, they're back with me in the within the day. And I think that's fantastic. That, that's the way it should be. So that's my story with, with endorsements, the bad. I know other people that have had different reasons for leaving. I've known people that have been let go. Uh, you know, it, it, there's all kinds of reasons, but this is just my story and what happened to me. And hopefully I don't have to go through that again, that fingers crossed, but uh, just know that there's good and bad to everything. So if this story is it intrigued you at all, uh, I, I hope that you will watch my other video if you haven't seen that one yet about the good of the endorsement industry and watch some of my, my uh, tutorials. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit the, the bell icon so you don't miss any content. Uh, if you've had a weird story like mine with endorsements or whatnot or trying to get one and they won't answer you back, Go ahead and jump, uh, drop that down in the comments below. And from that, yeah, welcome to Saturday morning. Sorry I'm a week late, but like I said, marching band took over and uh, competitions and whatnot. And from there on, we will see you in the next one. Take care, everybody.